Hi, I'm Dr. Vidushi uh, Sharma from Suvi Eye Hospital, Kota, Rajasthan, India. Uh, refractive surgical correction is now a very uh, rapidly expanding branch in ophthalmology and is firmly established. In this context, the Care Group India has recently launched IPCL or the implantable phacic contact lens, which has increased the range available for our patients of refractive correction. This IPCL is made of a hybrid acrylic material and therefore is easy to handle and use. And with its rational pricing, it is a big boon for refractive surgery patients who may be otherwise unsuitable for other surgeries like cornea-based refractive surgery or LASIK, etc. In this video, we share uh, some of the aspects of using this IPCL, including the case selection, the preoperative workup, the surgical technique, uh, and we hope to provide some uh, preliminary information for using this IPCL. So far, we have used uh, 10 such IPCLs, both simple IPCL as well as the toric IPCL, uh, which have become available only in the last 2-3 months. And we hope more and more people will use these IPCLs and also share their experiences with this product. I hope you will enjoy this video and we look forward to any suggestions or feedbacks. Thank you so much. Hi, I am Dr. Vidushi from Suvi Eye Hospital, Kota, Rajasthan. And in this video, we describe the technique of the implantation of a toric IPCL or an implantable fake contact lens, which has recently been launched by the care group in India. The case shown here was the first implantation of a toric IPCL in India by the care group. This is the preoperative patient data. She had a refraction of minus 7.5 diopter sphere and a cylinder of 1.5 diopter at 20 degrees in the right eye and a refraction of minus 7.5 diopter sphere with the cylinder of minus 2 diopter at 180 degrees in the left eye. A complete preoperative workup was done as for any other IPCL, including the refraction, the white to white measurement or the horizontal white to white, the pachymetry, the anterior chamber depth which was calculated from the endothelium to the lens that is after subtracting the pachymetry from the standard ACD measurements and the keratometry. Based on this preoperative workup which was sent to the company, the plan was to implant an, a toric IPCL in the right eye with the power of minus 9 diopters and another toric IPCL in the left eye with a power of 9.5 diopters as per the diagram and the results that were given by the company. This is the procedure of measuring the white to white horizontal diameter. We use a calipers, preferably a digital calipers and the patient is in the supine position under a microscope and topical anesthesia is used. After planning the surgery and getting the right size and power of the IPCL, which is custom made according to each patient based on their individual eye measurements, the first step for a toric IPCL implantation before taking up the patient into the OR is to do reference marking on the slit lamp. This is the same as for a toric intraocular lens that we are accustomed to doing. Now here is the uh, reference marking being done on the slit lamp pre-operatively. A drop of topical anesthetic is used and the axis marker is placed on the cornea and the axis is marked. Once we take the patient into the operating theater, after putting the patient under the microscope, we then again mark the axis under the microscope. We open the IPCL and fill the cartridge with BSS and HPMC. The viscoelastic preferred for IPCL implantations is hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose or HPMC as it is easier to remove. This is the toric IPCL which has been opened from its packaging. And as per the company guidelines, the toric IPCL is so designed that the 0 to 180 degree axis line should pass in between these two holes which are placed on the haptic. The holes have been marked here with the arrows. And as for the other standard IPCLs, these two uh, small holes placed on the optic haptic junction should be placed superiorly. The IPCL is then loaded into the cartridge with the correct orientation taking care that the marking on the leading haptics is on the left side. We then make a standard uh, side port incision and we can supplant the topical anesthetic with intracameral injection of preservative free lignocaine to provide additional anesthetic effect. We then inject HPMC into the anterior chamber. We must take care not to overfill the chamber and to inject 
so that the visible chains are still seen in the HPMC. We then make the main incision and again inject HPMC into the anterior chamber taking care not to overfill or underfill and to maintain visible HPMC chains in the anterior chamber. We then inject the toric IPCL into the anterior chamber, unfolding it carefully to ensure that it unfolds just above the iris. Just like for other IPCLs, we must take care that the IPCL is not directed posteriorly and does not hit the lens. Once the IPCL has come out of the injector, we ensure that it is properly oriented by seeing the uh, mark on the leading haptic on the left side and then using an instrument called the IPCL manipulator, the haptics are tucked behind the iris. There are three ha small haptics on each side and all six of these small haptics are tucked behind the iris. Once the IPCL has been properly positioned, we remove the HPMC from the anterior chamber using the irrigation aspiration instruments. And just like for tonic iris, after we have removed all the viscoelastic, we again ensure the proper alignment of the axis of the toric IPCL. This was the first model of the toric IPCL from the care group and it does not have the linear impression marks which are now available in all their toric IPCLs to help with the alignment of the axis of toric IPCLs. The incisions are then hydrated in the normal fashion and as is our routine, we inject intracameral moxifloxacin into the anterior chamber at the end of the surgery. On post-op day 1, the vision was 20-20 or 6x6 and UN5 unaided. The normal vault in all these IPCLs uh, should be between 250 and 750 microns or 1 to 1 and a half times the corneal thickness. This is the post-op OCT image of the right eye and the vault as seen here as expected, the patient was quite satisfied and happy with the results. K T G V R M R K V G T P Age of 70 in virtually everyone over of cataract formation is expected. Stage for cataract formation, some degree density, the, these natural processes may set the lens gradually loses its water content and increases in causes in simply the aging process. As we grow older, the diseases all may cause cataracts, but by far most common systematic diseases such as diabetes or other specific eye in congenital and juvenile cataracts, toic substance, certain eye injuries, coronate, various conditions may cause cataract to form. Heredity is, is the determining factor. The left eye surgery was done a day later. This is the reference marking on the slit lamp. And the axis was again re-marked re under the operating microscope. This is the IPCL. Again, we first fill the cartridge with BSS and viscoelastic that is HPMC.
We make side port incision, inject a lignocaine in the anterior chamber to supplant the anesthetic effect and then inject HPMC in the anterior chamber taking care not to overfill the chamber. We then make the main incision which is a temporal clear corneal incision which is best suited to the plane in which the IPCL needs to be implanted. Implant the IPCL Once the IPCL in the, is in the anterior chamber, we inject additional viscoelastic over the IPCL to ensure smooth tucking of the haptics behind the iris. We should always use the IPCL manipulator at the optic haptic junction or at the haptics and should avoid touching the optic of the IPCL at all times. The viscoelastic is then removed from the eye and the incisions are hydrated. Again, the post-op vision on day 1 was 20-20 or 6x6 and N5 unaided.